Which fraction is bigger, 3 fifths or 2 fifths? Now you may think this question is fairly straightforward, but let's take a closer look at why the answer is what it is. If we were to draw a diagram of 3 fifths, we would take a bar, split into 5 equal sections, and shade in 3 of them. For 2 fifths, we would do the same thing, but only shade in 2 of them. So you can see that 3 fifths is more than 2 fifths because we shaded in more. For this question, it's easy to spot which fraction is bigger because the denominators here are the same number. But what if they're not the same number? What if we need to work out what's bigger out of 3 quarters and 8 elevenths? Well, if we're to draw diagrams this time, for 3 quarters, we take a bar, split it into 4 equal sections, and shade in 3 of them. For 8 elevenths, we take a bar, split it into 11 equal sections, and shade 8 of them. This time it's not immediately obvious which one's bigger, they actually look fairly close. If we line up the bars next to each other, you can actually see that 3 quarters has slightly more shaded than 8 elevenths. So 3 quarters must be the bigger fraction. This isn't necessarily the best way to approach a question like this though. Let's have a look at another way. We're going to split both of the bars into quarters, but using horizontal lines like this. Then we will also split both of the bars into elevenths, but using vertical lines like this. You can now see we've split both of the bars into equal size squares, but how many squares are there? Well, if we counted along the top, there are 11 squares, and along the side, there are 4 squares. So we can do 11 times 4 to get 44 total squares that are all the same size. Now we can still shade in 3 quarters of the original bar by shading 3 horizontal strips like this. And we can also shade in 8 elevenths of the second bar by doing 8 vertical strips like this. Now to work out which one has more shaded, we can just count up the squares. So in the first one, 3 quarters, if we counted up all of the squares, we would find out there are 33 of them shaded. In the second one, for 8 elevenths, if we counted up all of the squares, we would find out there are 32 of them shaded. This means that we've shown that 3 quarters in the first diagram is the same as 33 over 44. This is because 33 are shaded and there are 44 squares in total. 8 elevenths is the same as 32 over 44, because there are 32 shaded and 44 in total. So we can now be sure that 33 over 44 is bigger than 32 over 44, which means that 3 quarters was bigger than 8 elevenths. Now you can actually do this process without drawing the diagrams at all. If we compare 3 quarters to 33 over 44, notice how we multiply this numerator here on top by 11, and also the denominator on the bottom by 11. For the 8 elevenths, we're multiplying the numerator by 4, and the denominator by 4. So instead of comparing 3 quarters and 8 elevenths, it's easier to compare 33 44ths and 32 44ths. Let's try this with another example. So let's compare the fractions 2 thirds and 7 tenths to try and work out which one's bigger. We'll take both of these fractions and we're going to rewrite them as different fractions with the same denominator. The question is, what would that denominator be? Well, it needs to be a number that both 3 and 10 go into. So a multiple of 3 and 10. So if we think about the 3 times table and the 10 times table, the number 30 is in both of them. This means we can use 30 as our new denominator. We then just think about how we get from 3 to 30 by multiplying. That must be multiplied by 10. So we multiply this 2 on the top here by 10 as well. And 2 times 10 is 20. This means that 2 thirds is the same as 20 thirtieths. For the second fraction, what do we multiply 10 by to get to 30? Well, that's by 3. So we multiply the 7 on the top by 3 as well. And 7 multiplied by 3 is 21. So 7 tenths is the same as 21 thirtieths. Now instead of comparing 2 thirds and 7 tenths, we can compare 20 thirtieths and 21 thirtieths. 21 thirtieths is bigger than 20 thirtieths, so the bigger fraction must have been 7 tenths. We can also use this process to order many different fractions. Let's have a look at how exam questions are usually written. So for this question here, it says put these fractions in order, starting with the smallest. And here are the fractions. What we want to do is rewrite all of these fractions so they have the same denominator. This means we're looking for a number that's a common multiple of all four of these denominators here. So it has to be a number that 3, 5, 10, and 15 all go into. My advice when trying to find this number is always look at the greatest denominator that you have, and that number's times table. And that would be 15, 30, 45, 60, and so on. 
So now let's go through each of these numbers and see if it's a multiple of all of the denominators we have. So we'll start with 15. Well, 3 does go into 15. So does 5, but unfortunately 10 doesn't. And 15 does. So the number 15 won't work because 10 doesn't go into it. So we can't use 15 as our denominator. Let's try 30. 3 goes into 30. 5 goes into 30. So does 10. And so does 15. So all of them go into 30, so this is a number that we could use for our denominator. So we're going to rewrite all of the fractions as something over 30. Now let's compare the denominators of each fraction with 30 to work out what we need to multiply by. So how do we get from 3 to 30? Well that's multiplied by 10. So we need to multiply the 2 on the top by 10 as well, which is 20. Now let's have a look at 4 fifths. How do we get from 5 to 30? This time it's multiplied by 6, so we multiply the 4 on the top by 6, and 4 times 6 is 24. Now let's have a look at 7 tenths. How do we get from 10 to 30? That's multiplied by 3. So we multiply the 7 on the top by 3, which is 21. And finally, 9 fifteenths. How do we get from 15 to 30? That's multiplied by 2. So we multiply the 9 on the top by 2 as well, and 9 times 2 is 18. So we've now converted all four of these fractions into equivalent fractions which have the same denominator. Usually you'll need to write your answers to this on an answer line. So the smallest one is this one here, 18 thirtieths, which originally was 9 fifteenths. So that's the one we write on the answer line. The next smallest one is 20 thirtieths, which originally was 2 thirds. The next one is 21 thirtieths, which was 7 tenths. And finally, the largest of all of the fractions was 24 thirtieths, which was 4 fifths. So we've now put these fractions in order of size. Let's try a second example. Once again, we're looking for a number that's a common multiple of all of the denominators. So 4, 5, 6, and 10. And the way I'd advise doing this is writing out the times table for the biggest of those numbers, so 10. So the 10 times table, 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. So let's begin with 10. Well, 5 goes into 10, and 10 definitely goes into 10, but 4 and 6 do not go into 10, so 10 can't be the denominator we use. What about 20? Well, 4 goes into 20, so does 5 and so does 10, but 6 doesn't, so we can't use 20. What about 30? Well, 5, 6, and 10 go in, but 4 doesn't this time, so we can't use 30 either. And what about 40? Well, 4, 5, and 10 go in, but not 6 again, so we can't use 40. So we need to keep going. So what about 50? Well, 5 and 10 go into 50, but not 4 and 6, so we can't use that either. So we keep going, and what about 60? Well, good news, finally, 4, 5, 6, and 10 all go into 60, so we can use 60 as our new denominator. So, how do we get from 4 to 60? Well, that's multiplied by 15. So we need to multiply the 3 on the top by 15, and 3 multiplied by 15 is 45. Then let's move on to 3 fifths. How do we get from 5 to 60? That's multiplied by 12. So we need to multiply the 3 on the top by 12, and 3 twelves are 36. Now for 5 sixths, how do we get from 6 to 60? We multiply by 10. So we do 5 times 10 on the top, and 5 times 10 is 50. And finally for 7 tenths, how do we get from 10 to 60? That's multiplied by 6, so multiply the 7 on the top by 6, and 7 times 6 is 42. So we've now converted all of these fractions to equivalent fractions all over 60. So let's write the answer line, and we're looking for the smallest one first. So that's 36 over 60, which was 3 fifths. Then we've got 42 over 60, which is 7 tenths. Then 45 over 60, which is 3 quarters. And finally 50 over 60, which was 5 sixths. So this is the answer to the question. Now what if the fractions look like this? In this question, if you're looking for a number that 6, 11, 14, and 20 all go into, it might take you quite some time, because the lowest number for which this is true is 4620. A question like this would almost certainly be on the calculator paper, so there's a slightly different approach we can use. Let's have a look at how we can use a calculator to order these fractions instead. What we're going to do is take a calculator and turn each of these into decimals. So first of all we'll do 5 sixths. The way we do this is we go ahead and we press 5, then the fraction button, and then 6, and then we can press equals. 
Now this shows a fraction, but if we press format and then go down to decimal, then press OK, it will give us this as a decimal. So 5 6 is the same as 0 0.833333 and so on. Now you may have an older style calculator and the method is ever so slightly different. Let's do 9 11 on the older style calculator. So we start by pressing 9 and the fraction button again, so the same as before, then 11. Then we press equals and then we go and press this button here that says S and D. We're going to press that a second time and you can see it as a full expanded decimal 0 0.818181 and so on. Now I'm not going to show you how to do this with the other two, but you just repeat those processes and you'll end up with this number here for 11 over 14 and this number here for 17 over 20. Now all we need to do to put these in order is compare the decimals. So if we get an answer line, the smallest decimal is 0 0.7857 because it's the only one that begins with a 7. So 11 over 14 must have been the smallest fraction. Now all of the other numbers have an 8 as the first number after this decimal point. So we're going to move on to the next digit to compare. You can see the top one has a 3 as the next digit, the second one has a 1 and the bottom one has a 5. 1 is the smallest of those numbers, so this one must be the next smallest. So 9 over 11 is the next smallest fraction. Then we compare the 3 and the 5, so 0 0.83 must be smaller than 0 0.85. So this one is the next smallest, 5 6 which means the biggest one must be 0 0.85 and 17 over 20. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and why not try the exam questions in this video's description.